Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation. And in this video, we're going to look at Maximum Likelihood Estimation. Let's let X1 through Xn be IID random variables distributed with some PDF or PMF F and with uh, the parameter space theta. That means this omega. That means this parameter theta lives in omega somewhere. Um, we're just going to go through down several notes about maximum likelihood estimation, and that's the way we're going to deal with this video. First of all, the joint PMF or PDF, since each of these observations are independent, it's the product of the marginals, which we will write as X in vector form. Um, for a given theta in omega, f of x is a function of x. For a given theta, if x is continuous, then f of x given theta can be thought of as this. It's the limit of the probability in a neighborhood of x where that neighborhood shrinks down. So it's the limit as delta goes to zero that we add and subtract a little bit and then let it go to zero. That's the for a density. If it's discrete, it's just the actual probability. So, so roughly, f of x is the probability of, of observing x. Now the same interpretation goes for the joint PDF or PMF. And that means it's the um, probability of, of observing that sample. Now here, here's a big note and, and extremely important. By changing theta, we obtain different probabilities for that given x. So, for instance, if we collect the sample, and if the parameter was, say, really small, then it may mean that it's very likely, or the probability is high, that we observe that sample. But if theta would have been large, then the probability of observing that sample would have been small. Right? Very important concept there. So then, for a given x, so now x is fixed, the maximum likelihood estimate of theta is, we're going to call it theta hat, and it lives in the parameter space, that maximizes this joint um, density function. Right? But now, normally the joint... PDF is a function of X with a fixed theta. But if conceptually we're thinking about fixing the sample and varying the theta, then we write it like this. It's, and, that's, and it's called the likelihood function. But really it's 100% the same. You just think about it differently. You know, the, the joint PDF is you, for a given theta, you know, that's the probability. But then for fixing our sample, then this is the likelihood of observing, you know, that theta. And the one that maximizes this is called the likelihood function. So you write that as theta hat is the arg max of this likelihood function. It's the and which is the MLE for theta. Now here's also a big note. Since the log function is strictly increasing, uh, theta hat or the maximum likelihood estimator of theta which is the arg max of the likelihood, is going to equal the arg max of the log of the likelihood. So maximizing the log likelihood, now notice the it's a little l, right? Uh, which is the log likelihood. So little l is log likelihood, capital L is likelihood. So maximizing the log likelihood is often much easier. And we get the same result as a as maximizing the likelihood function. So here's an example. Um, first, see my playlist, Maximum Likelihood Estimation, and I have lots of examples, and we go into depth, and actually later in this video, we'll touch upon some of what we do here. So let's assume we have a sample from a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. So uh, f of xi is this, so then the joint PD, PMF is a product of these individual marginals, which we get this. 
And now to, to do maximum likelihood, we have to think about it as a fixed sample and lambda is as the variable, right? So those two, while they look the same, conceptually they're a little bit different. So if we now if we take the log likelihood, so which is the natural log of the likelihood, we, we get this. So it's the log of this ratio is the is the difference of the logs, but then this product is the sum of the logs. So the log and that E cancels, and then it's plus the log of this, but we can take that out front, and then minus the log of, of what's underneath here. So now to find the maximum, we take the uh, first derivative of the log likelihood, and here we get minus N. Here we get the sum of the X's over lambda. That's zero. Now we set it equal to zero and we solve for lambda and we get that lambda or the maximum likelihood estimate is the sample mean. And one note here that so um, this is the first derivative. If we take the second derivative, that's zero, and here we get uh, some uh, minus some of this over lambda squared. Well, this is positive, always positive, and the minus makes it always negative. So the, the second derivative is always negative, which means it's a which this x squared is a maximum, and that's how one uh, how you drive maximum likelihood estimation. Now, this next theorem. To me, I find quite intriguing that the maximum likelihood estimator is invariant under functional transformations. So let's let theta hat be the MLE of theta, and of course it's in the parameter space omega. Let's let phi be a function defined on omega. Then this, so phi of the maximum likelihood estimator is actually the maximum likelihood estimator of this entire function. So first of all, let's let's let phi be a one-to-one -one function. Now that's not a requirement of the theorem, so this is just the first part of the proof. Then let's let tau be this phi of theta, and since phi is one-to-one, -one, we can take its inverse function. So theta is equal to this, and then note that this is the likelihood, and. But if theta is equal to this, we can plug it in. Now, this, which we know this function is maximized at phi of theta, right? The maximum likelihood estimator is theta hat. Um, so what's the maximum of this when it's sort of a function of, of tau? Well, it's still whatever this value is when we plug in theta hat. So the maximum likelihood estimator of this is when this piece right here is theta hat. So uh, tau hat, meaning the maximum of this. Oh, now how now how do we how is this a maximum likelihood estimator? Remember that this is a one-to-one -one function. So maximizing this likelihood in terms of tau versus the one-to-one -one function of tau, it actually you end up with the same value. So the maximum of this is when this piece here is equal to theta hat, right? That's it has to be. That's the way that uh, theta hat is defined, the maximum likelihood estimator. So if we take phi of both sides here, that says tau hat is phi of theta hat, and tau hat is the maximum likelihood estimator of that function. Now here we assumed it was one to one. Now let's assume, so, so part of the theorem is true here. Now let's let phi be a many to one function, okay? Um, and let's, and let's look, re-look at some of these steps, okay? So we have a function of theta, and since it's many to one, so there may, there may be lots of these thetas that go to the same value, okay? So here, instead of having an inverse function, let's have a pre-image function. So this pre-image of tau will produce 
a set of these thetas that equal this, right? Because it's a many to one function. So then if we let the likelihood function of this be this, but remember this can be like a group of thetas where it's the same value. But this is still maximized at theta hat. So when this is theta hat, it's maximized. But there may be lots of thetas that create this, this value, right? Here, if we plug it in here, um, it's the preimage, so there's going to be lots of thetas, but one of them, theta hat, is going to produce the biggest one. But that means there's going to be other thetas that make it the biggest, okay? So it's possible that we have our maximum likelihood estimator. Well, we know it's this, but it could be this too. There's going to be potentially several maximum likelihood estimators in this many to one function. Um, but, oh, hence the MLE is not unique, but still this is a maximum likelihood estimator of theta hat. So the theorem is still true. Plugging in the maximum likelihood estimator to the arguments of this function creates the maximum likelihood. It just may not be unique when that function is not a one-to-one -one function. Okay, well, that's all I'm going to talk about that. And we'll illustrate it with an example. So let's let Xi be IID Poisson. Let's find the maximum likelihood estimator of this function phi of lambda. And our function is going to be the probability that x is greater than lambda. And since it's a Poisson, we know that it's this. Now, strictly greater means that we can add 1 to lambda, but then we have to take the floor to make it an integer. And then we sum from that number to infinity. And that's this probability. Um, but that's hard, so we take 1 minus it, and we, and we create this so one minus and we go from zero to that number and then so the maximum likelihood estimator of phi of lambda is you plug in the maximum likelihood estimator of lambda to this phi function which we said was this so then you just stick in the maximum likelihood estimator wherever there's a lambda where that's the sample mean and so this is the maximum likelihood estimator of the probability that x is greater than lambda well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Now, as a kind reminder, I have a, a whole playlist on maximum likelihood estimator um, that goes into depth about maximum likelihood estimation. Um, hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.